Hello there. Wanted to spend a few minutes today talking to you about some of the introductory components for public speaking. First starting with the, what we call the building blocks of public speaking, and then a little later on talking about topic selection and, and things related to that. But first, let's, let's dig into what we call the building blocks of public speaking. A few years ago, a friend and I came up with this chart, sort of based on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If it, if it looks recognizable to you, that's why. Um, but we came up with this chart, what we call the building blocks of public speaking. You can see it's nothing too dramatic, but the point here is that you don't start as an expert public speaker. You start at the beginning. And, and so the expectations in a class like this or, or for a beginning public speaker are not that you come out and just dazzle everybody. I always tell people for the first speech in particular, if you come out, if you can manage to not throw up, not pass out, and not run away, then you've, you've had a successful speech for that first time out. And, and we'll build from there. Because then you know you can do it, and then we'll start to build from there. So really that, I mean, we start with that foundational level, and then we build up like we're building a house. That's the metaphor we use a lot of times. Like we're building a house. You start with that foundation, then you build up some of the framework. You do some from some framing in of walls and things like that, and you start to see some some rough elements of the structure come to life. Eventually, when you have you know drywall and fixtures and things like that, and then you would move on to the furnishings and and how you're gonna you know what you're gonna need a bed in here and a couch in there and so forth, uh, and then eventually you'll get into the finishing touches. What what paintings are you gonna hang up and things like that. The same is true in public speaking. You start with the beginning level stuff, you start with that foundation, and then you build from there, you grow from there. So what's it going to take for you to become a more effective public speaker? I have what I call the big three. Three things that are going to be necessary for you to become a, a better public speaker. The first is education. It, it takes some education. This is a learned skill, like so many other things. So it's going to take a little education, which you're going to get here in this class. That's the good news. You're going to get some education here. We're going to tell you the do's and don'ts. And public speaking really is a straightforward skill. It's a list of do's and a, and a list of don'ts. And if you can maximize the do's and minimize the don'ts, then you'll be in good shape. Um, second is preparation. This is something they can't really provide for you. Uh, this is something that's going to be 100% on you. How much time are you going to spend preparing for these things? Effective public speeches, uh, effective speeches in general, are not things that we can just wing. Uh, some people think they can. Some people, you know, and they may have moderate success with that, but but effective public speaking, real public speaking, ethical public speaking requires a great deal of preparation. So, uh, And that's going to be on you. So you need some education. You need to learn how to do these things and learn what the skills are. Then you need some preparation. You need to commit to that preparation. And then finally, you need some experience, which you're also going to get in this class. We're going to have you do some speeches, but the more you do it inside class, outside of class, the easier it's going to be each time. Not, not a lot. You're not going to have probably one of those breakthrough moments where you're just like, Oh my goodness, I love public speaking now. No, no, it's going to be one small step at a time. It's going to be incremental. But every time you do this, every time you get a little experience, it'll get a little easier for you, and you'll get a little better at it. So those are the three things you need. Two of them we're going to provide in this class. One is more on you. Hopefully you'll take advantage of it in this class as well. But you need some education, you need some preparation, and some experience. And with those three things, there's no reason that you can't expect to be a more effective public speaker and leave this course better than when you came in. So the first thing we need to talk about in terms of public speaking um, is topic selection. Well, what are we going to talk about? The good news is a lot of times outside of class, your topic selection will be narrowed down. If you're asked to speak to an organization or to a group or whatever, they're probably going to say, we'd like for you to talk about this. But inside this class and, and some other occasions, you don't have that luxury. And it sounds wonderful. You can talk about anything, uh, but that also makes it a little more challenging too. So, so what should we be talking about? What's our topic area? So, this sort of Venn diagram contains sort of three critical elements to selecting a topic. Um, first is, in the top right, is, is there something that you know a lot about? That can be a good place to start. Something you're, you're going to be more comfortable speaking about, something you're comfortable with and, and familiar with. You're going to know where to look for resources, uh, and you're going to be uh, you know, kind of ahead of the a game a little bit in terms of knowing about that topic. So a good place to start is think about what is it that I know how to do? What is it that I do, either either at work or as a hobby or whatever? What is something that I know inside and out that I already know a great deal about? Uh, secondly, top left, you can see there's that, that section that says, are you passionate about this topic? What is it that you care about? An audience is going to know if you don't care about your topic. So it's critical that you're talking about something you care about, first of all. Secondly, that's going to make it a lot easier when you go to research the topic. I mean, if I gave you a topic of, I want you to give a speech on World War II uh, German tanks, and that's not an area of interest for you, 
you're going to dread doing research, you're not really going to be excited to talk about it, so you want to make sure that this is a topic that you're passionate about. Even even if it's something maybe maybe you're not as knowledgeable about, but if you're passionate about it, it's going to be something you're more interested in learning about and speaking about, so, so they can kind of make up for that as well. But some combination of are you knowledgeable about this topic, and if so, or if not, are you passionate about this topic? But then the bottom one we also need to consider. Is the topic relevant to our audience? Does the audience care about this topic? Uh, it does us no good to talk about something we care about and we're passionate about and we know about if nobody else is interested. Now, that doesn't mean that the audience has to be 100% interested before you start speaking. But really, um, by the time you, you get through your introduction of your speech, the audience ought to be pulled in. That's part of our job as a speaker as well, is to pull that audience in. But we can make our job a lot easier by thinking about the audience in advance, and we should have the audience in mind at every stage of public speaking. But when we're thinking about a topic, what is my audience going to be interested in? What's going to be relevant to them? That I can, How can I connect this topic to them? That's something that always ought to be on our mind. So ideally, somewhere you see in the, in the middle of that Venn diagram, is that it says select from here. So ideally, you're going to select from a, a topic that's something you know a little bit about, something you're passionate about, something the audience is going to be interested in, and you'll hit that sweet spot and find a topic right there in the middle of that Venn diagram. So how do we know if it's a good topic? There are some questions we can ask ourselves to know if it's a good topic. First of all, is it unique or new information or perspective? Um, we don't want to hear about things we already know about. An audience is not going to be interested in learning how to tie their shoes or how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich unless you've got some really critical new information or way of doing that. That's not going to be unique or new information to the audience. There's no real purpose for them to listen, so there's no real purpose for us to give that speech. So we need to think, is it a good topic? Well, is it unique or is it new information or perspective for the audience? Secondly, is it relevant and useful? We kind of touched on this in that Venn diagram. Is this something that's going to be of interest to the audience, something that's going to be relevant to their lives, something they're going to be able to use outside of that uh, speech and afterwards? Next, what's the rhetorical situation? By which we mean, what's the context? Am I speaking to a group of senior citizens? Am I speaking to a group of, you know, a, a group meeting with the National Rifle Association? Am I speaking to a local Rotary Club? What's the rhetorical situation? I need to know who I'm speaking to and what's the general situation uh, to, so I can determine whether or not it's a good topic. Uh, if, if I know that that group is gathered together for a common interest, then I really want to make that topic related to that interest as much as possible. That's my best route anyway. So what's the rhetorical situation? Next, if this is a persuasive speech, is there room for persuasion? Have I left room both in my topic for people to be moved uh, to one direction or the other from that speech? Um, or am I picking something that's too difficult or something that's too um, too easy? You know, you, you don't need to go into the National Rifle Association and give a speech persuading them why, you know, gun control should be more lax. We should have more lax rules about gun control. They're already on the same page. There's no room for persuasion there. Uh, but you have to find a middle ground wherever you're at and, and ask, is there room for persuasion in this topic that I've chosen? And then finally, is it narrow in scope? Is it specific enough? Given the timelines for your speech and given the, given the uh, general rhetorical situation, have I picked a topic that is narrow enough in scope that I can discuss everything that has the right amount of breadth and depth? And just to demonstrate that here, we've got a little graph showing, you know, every speech is going to have to be concerned with both breadth and depth, by which we mean, is it Am I covering enough on this topic, the breadth of it? Am I covering enough of this topic? And then depth, am I getting deep enough into each of these areas? And so you want to avoid things like uh, th this graph would show a speech that is too broad. It's covering too many topics because then it doesn't allow for that depth, uh, given the time constraints of that speech. It doesn't allow for, for you to get in depth. So you're just covering, you're, you're a mile wide and an inch deep. You're not covering enough of each specific area with great enough depth. But you also want to avoid going the other direction. You don't want to get too deep into one thing so that you miss a bunch of breadth in the other areas. That would lead to either you have one main point that's extremely long and two others that you're that you're just kind of rushing through and not really covering, or other information that you just don't get to at all. Uh, you want to avoid uh, being too deep and not broad enough. So you need to find, again, that sweet spot between depth and breadth. We need to narrow our topic to the point where we're able to cover with enough breadth and enough depth. And that comes back to selecting main points, and we'll get into that a little later in the course. But when we talked about developing your main points and selecting how many main points you're going to have and things like that, we really need to be focused on breadth and depth and narrowing our topic uh, in a specific way. So where do we come up with these topics? How do we come up with these topics? Um, you know, one good way to come up with uh, topics is to start with brainstorming. 
And when we've got that Venn diagram, right, we're going to pick from things kind of that we know about, that we're passionate about, the, it's going to be relevant to the audience. But from there, where do we go? And there are a couple different brainstorming techniques that you can use. One is just word association. You just start writing down random things that pop into your mind, random words that pop into your mind, and you just list them all out, and then eventually you go back and review and see, you know, is there something I can hear of a make out of a topic here? You know, we're just writing down random things. So, um, so we have word association. And then you also have a little more organized way of doing this, what we call concept mapping where we start with a central idea, and then maybe that idea is, is too broad or, or not exactly hitting what we want, so we start with something like, in this example, we'd start with ethics, and we think, well, ethics is pretty broad for a speech that I'm going to be giving, so I may need to narrow it down and talk about a specific area of ethics. And so you divide, you start concept mapping and, and dividing out these different ideas, you know, ethics related to religion or society or law or government or so, you know, uh, so forth. And, and then you can go even more specific from there. As you can see, we've got... We've got maps coming off of our maps, you know, idea, trunks of ideas coming off of our trunks of ideas. So um, you can use concept mapping to uh, brainstorm ideas for speeches as well. So these are really just some ways to uh, to come up with some topic ideas and places to start. Again, I would start. I would encourage you to start with things you know, uh, because you're going to be comfortable there. And if you're a little more comfortable than that, you can you can step over into things you're passionate about. Either way, you should talk about something you care about. But, uh, but for example, if you have an area that maybe you don't know a lot about, but you're interested in learning about, that would be a good place to go as well. But always think about what's going to be relevant to the audience, what's the audience going to be interested in, how am I going to connect this topic to the audience, and then you go from there. You start from there in selecting topics. So if you have questions about how to select topics or, or generally about any of the materials from, from this session, um, or if you need some help with topic selection, feel free to email me at the uh, at the uh, email address provided there and uh, in, in the course, and I would be happy to um, correspond with you and help you narrow down a topic or help you pick out a topic. Um, that's what I'm here for. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email me and let me know. Okay. Good luck selecting topics and good luck with your beginning speech making.